time. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Coco and Pete podcast, everybody. Hello. Yeah. What's going on over there? I'm petting Phoenix the cat. I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more. Wow, he wanted me to do it. Sometimes I pick him up and go, How am I my ever way? And he goes like God, <laughs> stop being that. <laughs> Dad, again? <laughs> yeah. Right, baby. Yeah, he's a happy baby. Woohoo! Yeah. He's one of those cats that you can let out and forget about him for a couple days and he's fed himself somehow. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's just got bird, kitty. bird feathers on his face and a smile with a little side dish of crickets. <laughs> right. He's not a condo kitty. He gets nah, it. Nah. But the thing is, he brings him in alive. He goes, here, you can kill it. Oh, God, you got to pick it up. And it looks like a yeah. triage station out front. <laughs> you put different birds down. <laughs> right, baby. I'm, I'm disappeared. Okay. I used to have a green screen oh, back oh. there, but no one lets me have it. So, oops. I missed Nobody. Oh. Oh my God! Things are happening yeah. over here. Oh no, yeah. not that. that still wearing. I'm still in wear, wearing my 17 shirts that look just like my uh, my chair. Literally, good look, for I you. Can blend into the chair, and then I can slowly move away from the chair. Look, it's the same Lover. shirt. <laughs> if I do so this, it looks you can like put I some have. Shirt. If I have horns, there we go. Oh, actually, you do have horns. <gasps> Watch out, IRS. Yeah, well, when I die, I'm going to be in charge of Pit 47. There you go. <laughs> we're on coffee oh, break right now. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> what, were we, what were we chatting about a little while ago? I already forgot. What was that? It was about something. <laughs> that was totally useless. Sorry. <laughs> I, I think it was about how you finance something. Was it? I'm not really sure. Well, like if you just start a business, everyone says don't use your own money, which means you got to find someone dumb enough with money that will give you money. OPM, right? other people's money. Uh huh. And if you're the investor, if that person doesn't know how economics works, or if they say a lot about things about feel uh, feelings, run, because you're going to lose your money. <laughs> feelings, nothing more than feelings. I don't know how to do the business. I've been actually with a lot of clients where they started a corporation. And they have their first meeting. You know, I said, let's go through a corporate meeting, how it works. And so I'll be chairman. This is one time. We'll write that down. And what are you? You're the president. You're the secretary. You're the treasurer. I explained all the different jobs are. And then within 10 to 20 minutes, you find out eventually they're just going to start hating each other. So that's all you're going to do for one third of it is because people arbitrarily will give out a percentage. You've got to have that. un What's the word I'm looking for? Uncomfortable conversation very early. You got to find out what exactly you're going to do and what they're going to charge people and what they're going to do. So this one was, um, I can say what it was because it'd be very quick. People will figure it out. But one was the artist. One was the salesperson. And one just ran the day-to-day money. Now that person that runs day-to-day money has experience at that. That's a, that's a good bet. You want that one. The one that is advertising. Oh, hell yeah. You need that. You're not gonna make any money. But the artist right. usually likes to make something once and then do nothing afterwards and still wants one third. <laughs> it's like, hmm. And now if it was, I don't know, Picasso, they would get more. That makes sense. But no one knows who the hell you are and, and you're making, uh, I don't know, uh, toilet paper. That's fancy. <laughs> fancy toilet paper. Oh, yeah. How hard is it? I'm sorry. I got distracted with the cat staring at me. Like, we want branded know? toilet paper. That's what we really want. That's what properties these days need because <laughs> they think they're the shit. They need to have <laughs> toilet paper that makes sense. Like, oh, it needs to be branded. Oh, oh, it be branded. All right. Don't well, worry. Uh, well, what you need is something that doesn't plug up the toilet because somehow they don't tell you. <laughs> and then you show up and go, oh, my God. <laughs> And I can tell you the stories of property management of what's been flushed that has nothing to do with reality. Oh, do tell. I have lots of stories. I know my stories. I don't know all your stories. So please tell me. I mean, anything grotesque is obviously going to go down uh, into the toilet history. But there are (laughs) other things like keys, phones. (laughs) I think the word is the reason for that. uh, Pool pool balls. Like Uh, uh a pool like, okay. how does this Why? happen? <laughs> no, there's no mistake involved, right? Yeah, like, yeah. You had to go to the pool table. Hmm, the nine is nice. Plop. <laughs> yeah. I want to know what the conversation was like when they before they. Oh, lost you again. 
Don't worry, I'm there. Well, I, I, <laughs> I want to know what that conversation is like before that goes in. I think the combination goes a lot like this. Say you have like a mug of something in it. You know it's a good idea. Hold on. Get the pool balls. <laughs> or a lot of that. That's There's a lot thing. of that going on. <laughs> like I have no problem people smoking pop. I just have to be allergic to it. You know what I mean? It's like I can't be near it. And and it's frustrating when you have a no smoking room, and I do that specifically, um, so I could breathe. You know, and then I'm like, oh, you know, and again, I'm not mad at the person who wants a nice puff or things like that. I just <clears throat> they don't realize they something. You know what's worse? Is the people that um, smoke vape. There's a chemical in oh, there yeah, that terrible. holds it together that shuts my lungs down because I have bronchitis. So poof. So I might be at a bar and I know it's no smoking. There's food there. Here's someone goes, everyone enjoy the inside of my lungs. And it gets me because I get it when I least expect it. And it takes them over a week to recover. And you people out there, they think it's not harmful. On the other hand, a good cigar, a good one, not a crappy one that's just pure tobacco. No problem. No problem at all. Actually, I like the smell. It reminds me of my grandfather. <laughs> the same one who was the farting grandfather? Oh, that was just a joke. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> he was a gross father. In the end, he did because he had like a, he had a, a tumor in his head and it somehow messed with his bowels. And every once in a while, he would go, drool a little bit and, rip, and I'm like, <sighs> oh my God. But that was right near the end though. But all in all, he may have been an evil man to other people, but he's a sweet man to me. He taught, me a lot, he taught me a lot about how money works. Now, I was seven, I barely spoke English. So, but who knew that that would sink in? You know, it's like, Grandpa, do you ever go to work? Because we're at a pool hall. <laughs> he did own a beauty shop, auto beauty shop. He did own a bar. He would tell me things An like- An auto beauty shop? That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. They would go detail and all that stuff, and then they would fix things <laughs> and whatever. Uh, I can tell you real details on how it worked, but that's not the point. But yeah, Grandpa is playing pool with some other Goombas, <laughs> and they're just talking business, if you get my drift. <laughs> Let me tell you a story this way to give an idea about my grandfather. Oh, my mom- we used to work the nightclubs. And if you've ever been in Detroit, they have a place called um, Greek Town, which is actually run by, you know, da 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 So you had the Greeks, then you had the Italians. And things. this is a long time ago. And she loved these guys, you know, like, you know, she'd dance with them and this. And it was like, they're nightclubs. She was like the singer and the German accent. And I remember, she wasn't married to my dad, so she's she's free, free spirit. So anyway, she's dancing with this guy. And he goes, hey, you're coming home with me tonight. This is the way she told the story. And I, she goes, no, I don't think so. He goes, no, you're coming home. I, like, I have children. Oh, no, we said a babysitter took care of the whole thing. I said, like, I don't think you did. <laughs> and he goes like, well, what's your name, honey? And she said the full name. And she goes, are you Vespucci? And then the rest of the names. Daughter-in-law? Well, yes, I am. Tell me I said hi. And he ran. Right. I, you get a better idea about my grandfather. <laughs> Run. Yeah, Run. you go tell him saying grandfather is racist. I think that was so that was his son that uh, I met over in uh, Detroit. No, and, no, no, that was um, yeah, it was his son. You're right, that was the younger brother of my dad. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you are correct 100%. Um, no, you but you didn't meet him, he, you just met him as oh, no, I met him, yeah, you met of. him, yeah, you ran into each other, I believe. body and soul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce was kind of funny though, he had a dry sense of humor, he wasn't very social, but I was fine with him. And one time I came to the house to take my grandmother out to eat. And he goes, you got fat. He says at the door. And I said, you're still ugly. He goes, come on in. And that was, that's how we would talk to each other. <laughs> you never met anything bad by it. It's just the way we talk to each other. Our family was nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on in. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> My grandmother, old school, she's Irish, born in 1912. Interesting story about her is her father, uh, was one of the head rivers of the Titanic. And if you look at all the workers, uh, the picture of them, he's in the picture. And he was also Ireland's champion swimmer. So we thought mm -hmm. it was funny to go, of course you are. You can't build a ship that doesn't sink. You know, and then you could go, that's not funny. <laughs> a little bit funny. A little bit funny. Oh, it was really funny because he also built the, he helped build the, tit uh, the Titanic, the Olympia, and the um, Britannia. All of them suck at some point <laughs> for some reason. I can't remember why, though. Maybe one got hit by a missile. I forgot what it was. But anyway. Um, the Lusitania, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Well, no, he didn't build the Lusitania. That one already existed before Titanic. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. I, I don't know why I know all this stuff, but it helped me win an audit once because the guy was the Titanic fan, the auditor. And speaking of, well, now, wait a minute. Now, speaking of Titanic, what the what, the what is up with the freaking people going down in, in the uh, jury-rigged kind of nonsense stupidity zone box to uh-huh. go look at the Titanic? Please, please, uh, let us expand on how... <laughs> Let's hire people that are less experienced instead of an old white guy <laughs> if i'm going and i know it will implode and mean my death i want grandpa <laughs> or great grandpa running that thing that knows what they're doing <laughs> why are they using such garbage for building this thing they, they were bragging about how little they spent and how yeah. in, it, in inappropriate this equipment was for example yeah. the nintendo <laughs> controller for the unit it, I know it's too soon. It Even like, Nintendo I, wouldn't have used that, okay? Let me show you how it's easy to kill rich white people. Oh <laughs> Let's put God. them in this box and just dunk them. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with them? And, like, it was, like, barely riveted together. They had, like, recycled this. And, like, inside, it was only this, like, really compact, short little space where they could get in. They had to duck in the whole thing. And you know what the worst part to me about this was? That the the billionaire guy wanted to take his son, and the son did not want to go. Yep, and the son died with him down there. That is true. Son of a... Not a good business model. The first time you go down, you die. (laughs) Well, at least it's a short trip. Do I get half off? (laughs) Go half. And never come up again. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing about it. I know it's sad, but at the same time, I know time, it's so soon. I know. Did, did, you, did, did anyone not see this coming? <laughs> I can't even imagine that they didn't see it happening. Yeah. It, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what What in the hell is What in the hell is so smart about building something that's made of such crap? Yeah. Nothing. That's what I'd like to understand. Like, why is that somehow make sense? Oh, yeah, we're totally – I want to go down to how far down was it? Mm-hmm. Oh. And it's like 1,500 feet down below the surface of the water, right? It's like, what are they thinking? I mean, no, honest to God, I honestly asked this question, what were they thinking? Yeah, I mean, no one has respect for nature and how powerful it is. We, well, we looked at 5% of the ocean, if that. And then you're putting people down in, like, another atmosphere or several atmospheres of pressure. It's going to squash you. <laughs> Even submarines have imploded, and they're built with a lot of money. You know, it's like. It, you know what it reminds me of? This expedition reminds me of a, another tragedy. The Malaysian flight, where we oh. were looking for the flight in the wrong ocean. Yeah, yeah, it just went over here. Well, they turned off the transponder, and whoever was flying that clearly was either stealing the plane or suicide time. <laughs> Yeah, your, your life's in your hand. I think some But looking in the wrong place, I guess, yeah. is my point. Yeah, yeah. Like I was looking at, I, I'm aware of how to fly a plane, a small one, because I learned how to fly when I was 12. Um, again, I said, you know, my dad flew things around. Don't know what it was. What, the, <laughs> what he did. <laughs> you son of the gross father. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my family is involved in a lot of bad things that happened throughout history at some point. <laughs> But oh, the reason I met 1912, my grandmother was born in 1912, and he had a free ticket to go on Titanic. He didn't go because my grandmother was being born. So this is how weird my life is. If he would have went Titanic, I wouldn't exist. If it wasn't for Hitler, <laughs> I wouldn't exist either. I feel really bad about that one <laughs> because my dad was part of the occupying army with the Air Force when he met my mom. Okay. <laughs> then they I had my sister. Going. Yeah. Then she got married wearing her black and white dress and had my sister, oh, less than nine months <laughs> further along. I never tell people exactly where I'm born, but I'm born a U.S. citizen because he's that. Um, but still, um, it, it's weird how history intertwines in us. And when you really look hard, you're like, oh, my God, a psychotic dictator and a ship that they think sunk on purpose <laughs> could have ended my entire family line. The Italians are different because Mussolini came along and kicked them all out, or at least them, the Sicilians. You're starting to get the drift of this, I guess. <laughs> but it's fascinating. It really is fascinating. And you, almost we have nothing to do with like our family history. No. Like we're just here. We just happen to be here, right? No. You know, yeah. in, in ancient Roman history, they would have killed all of us because of the history, right? You yeah. know, 
Yeah. What if everyone's dead? Oh, yeah, forget then, you and your family. You're all going yeah. down. And then later change their mind and go, I guess we agree with them. Right. <laughs> Depending on which Roman Roman when you your Rome lasted so much longer than people think it lasted. They think of the Western Empire, but the Byzantine Empire, which they didn't call themselves that, lasted until oh my God. Uh, was it 14 something? We're talking about a run of a few 2000 years. Wow. Yeah. You know, it just shifted capitals and all that. But the same thing, bad economics brought them under. You know, they did, they, they lost land, they lost economics, and they still had the main city of uh, 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 Byzantium, which is why they called the Byzantine Empire, later uh, Constantinople, uh, then, uh, yeah, and, then, and then Istanbul. In the song like that, Istanbul, Constantinople. It's, it's, the bull. <laughs> it's better when it's sung by a creature. Sitting on the Ritz. Okay, sorry. I'm going so far back that no one is talking on the Ritz. <laughs> that was a good time. I'm sorry, but a good Mel Brooks movie would be uh, fabulous wow. to have out now, but I don't think we could we could fly with a new Mel Brooks movie at uh, this moment. He finally did History of the World Part Two, but you have to go look, see it I on heard that. Yeah, but I haven't I seen heard it yet that. either. I love it. I saw him in the distance once. The funniest thing he ever said, I thought they were doing the Tony Awards because you had the producer's movie, then you had the producer's play, and then you did the movie again. But this was the play. He's winning everything. He has thanked everyone. He wins Best Picture. And he goes, I'd like to thank Hitler. That was great, wasn't it? I'd like to thank Was it springtime for Hitler? Was that not? That was one of the songs, but it was the producers. But in the thing, you know, he's making fun of him, obviously, it was, which was perfect. And, you know, and he said, I bet you never see a Jew say that. It was, it was beautiful. <laughs> it cut to our, uh, Carl Reiner, who's cracking up. <laughs> this Because I don't usually watch the Tony Awards unless I went to see the play. Like, I like, I saw Les Miserables in New York. I saw that, you know, I, I love good shows. And um, I'm like, well, okay, I know that play. And I just watched it. And they just swept everything. But. The way, the way his mind works, it's unedited, but it's also oddly truthful. And that's what makes something funny. <laughs> you know, I made fun of that. It's fun to make fun of Nazis. really easy because they, they just, they were just being them. And you're like, and okay. And we'd laugh thinking there's no way that can be true. There's no way they're going to do that. Holy crap. These are evil people. <laughs> 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 But have you ever seen Springtime for Hitler, the song? Oh, it's just hysterical. Springtime for Hitler. What a yeah. great in-your-face situation <laughs> to deal with. But, you know, he had to talk somebody in the money for that, and he had to put the show on. Everything still revolves around cash, something entertaining that people will go to and watch. Uh, mess uh, entertainment shouldn't be message-driven unless it's message-driven. As you know ahead of time, this is what its purpose is. And there's room for that. But at the same time, I'm going to be entertained. Yeah. And if, at the same time, if I get fooled and I was like, what? You know, I, I feel like I've been tricked. Now, if I know in advance and I still want to see that, that's fine. No problem with that. But again, it's it's untruthful because what makes a movie money is to watch it multiple times. When we did Bums the Musical, you had asked me about the play. We ran six uh, weeks. What, what, what movie have you seen the most amount of times? Historically? Um, now, what, what movie have what's the highest number of times you've watched a movie and what was it or what are your top three that you've seen the most no, I, I, I think it's all the harry potter movies because i'm such a geek <laughs> all of those geek over and over because i'm always looking for Remember mistakes in the background and stuff like Come that on. i actually read the books and go that's not how that goes <laughs> i saw those love me moulin rouge apollo uh 13. yes uh, it was another one I watch over and over. Um, other weird ones. Um, um, Gettysburg. I like history. You know, saw mm. that one a few times. Uh, I, own, I own them. If I like them, I just buy them. It's because I'll watch them. If I know a movie really well, I can fall asleep to it, wake up half, you know, uh, half asleep and know where I am. I don't have to be, well, I haven't. I've seen it enough times. Like, oh, that's the part where he's going to stab the guy. Oh, okay, get on. <laughs> right, right. As a kid, <laughs> as a kid, I literally watched Star Wars, the original, like What's I have more than 200 times. That is a guarantee. Yeah. I stopped counting it like 212 and I got bored counting it. So you like the first track. one? Because I like, I like well, the Empire Strikes Back. Well, I was a kid. When, well, that was, it was because it was round one. Empire Strikes Back, I liked more. Then I liked yeah. Return of the Jedi and I liked all the Star Wars. Yeah. And they've all been, except for having to be tormented with 
Jar Jar Brinks, uh, Binks. Yeah. That was, You're, you know, unacceptable you, behavior. You know, he almost attempted suicide, the guy who played that part. I well, just I saw mean, a documentary on it, and his people were just hateful for him. And because it was a dumb character, it's not his fault he got a part. But, uh, I know. but they blamed, that was but a they racist him character. I hated it. Yeah. And then they, uh, and, yeah, it was. And then they, and they hated him for it. They'll like, squeeze me? Really? At a planet far, far away, they came up with like, squeeze me? <laughs> I was revolted and insulted uh -huh. that they even bothered to put that in. But that's, you know. You know what would have been interesting? That he turned out to be a Sith. That would have been awesome. And then he was just playing stupid. And they got to the third one. He goes, die! Okay. That been <laughs> at least interesting. Like, okay, at least we can sort yeah. of maybe go with a little bit of that. Yeah, um, then I, like, another movie I've watched 100,000 times is probably The English Patient, um, mm -hmm. Sense and Sensibility which is all randomly connected. You're right. You, and you, like, the, not, you like the chick movies. Oh, no, I like Gladiator, Psycho for the Gladiator. Same reason, and, you know, Braveheart. Men. Again, huh? half-dressed men in skirts. <laughs> I am not I mad at men wearing those outfits, just in oh. case you're wondering. <laughs> Although they got it wrong. At that time period, they weren't wearing them because... No, they weren't. But, yeah. But, Braveheart is not historically correct by any measure. However, it's a fun I movie, though. I really did like the movie, though. <laughs> oh, I, I love the movie. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. But yeah. No, some of those movies have just been good. They've been really impactful. And then I'll, I'll see something like really cinematic that I'm, I'm a huge fan about movies, production of movies, um, enormously enamored by what they can bring to a life, what they can change about your experience, how you, you think about your own life and what mm -hmm. can happen in your life. And I, I just... I just love what it can do for somebody and, and what it does for us as humans. Um, and I think that another movie I, I saw that has, it's a foreign film. It's called the color of paradise. And it's a very old movie from, I, I um, never watched that. I uh, never, I never it's heard a Persian movie. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning to watch visually. Incredible movie, tough movie to watch, mm -hmm. tough to watch, but also beautiful at the same time and i, you, I think you, that you can make money at a low budget movie if you do it you right you can yeah but a high budget movie you, you, it's it's a crap shoot you know what i mean yeah. you're using you're using a lead in you take a loss on it over a period of time but you put enough um pre-shows into it to watch these movies no one knows about <laughs> yeah and then and then making right. money on the low low budget ones now what about what about series what are you into for a series um we know that I, I did I did like the Sopranos, um, reminding me of family. Um, and I did <laughs> I did like um, I, I did like uh, 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 the Game of Thrones until they ran out of source material and kind of ruined it at the end there. But up until uh, they right. still had yeah until they had, why they still had all the beautiful dialogue and all that man it was a great movie. it needed one more season they just decided they were done. But they needed, did. The Dean War season is like, oh, she's suddenly evil and burns the town. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if I'm ruining it for you, oh but God. by now, <laughs> suddenly, <yeah. laughs> like what? <laughs> I mean, they did have hints it was coming, but it did, then they flipped the switch at the right at the end there. I can understand they're trying to make her look more and more mad because you know the head came off of her assistant and all these other things. But it needed another season for her to slowly simmer and boom and go for it because it wasn't her personality at first. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, yeah. an interesting. Uh, oh, the Orville. Oh, I haven't I watched that yet. I they they only did um three seasons, and they didn't get renewed. Damn you, Disney! Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to be renewed because so, it went from Fox to Disney, and then they put it on this and that. And uh, um, if you think who was the one who made that movie? It's the one that does Family Guy. Um, it's not Family Guy. Yeah, like they start off not knowing what they were going to do. The first one was kind of, hey, but it was their pilot. The second one was changing, but by the third one, they started getting an idea what they were. Oh, the, or Orville. I to, okay, okay. I thought you said the Oracle. Okay, got no, it. No, no, no. Uh, I can tell you <laughs> No what, big deal. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like when, when there's a story, like I've read the Summerillion and all that, that you go and change it. That, that doesn't need to be changed. There's plenty of stories of somebody that you can do. You know, and that bothered me. Um, like the one that was recently done, I'm getting in so much trouble now. <laughs> well, that recently was done where they were doing Cleopatra. Cleopatra mm -hmm. is an inbred Greek. There's 
busts of her, pictures of her, she wasn't black. But if you would have done Queen of Sheba, oh, I would have loved that. I want to hear it. Queen of Sheba was beautiful. She seduced uh, the Jewish guy from uh, from Israel. <laughs> had sex with her. She had to be hot. I want to see that movie. <laughs> right. But no, we have to go take something else instead of instead of um, presenting something that was beautiful. And they, they don't get it. I want to ruin this rather than show you something that was beautiful, someone that was strong and that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that bothered me because I was looking so forward for the Lord of the Rings series type yeah. thing, not Lord of the Rings, but the other part, and they ruined it. Completely really ruined it. I've, I've read the books. I've read the Summerillion. I've read the um, – uh, actually, I read The Hobbit last. They, they Actually, they stretched that out in a movie that shouldn't be that long. <laughs> it shouldn't have been three movies. It was one short movie. The other one was three books. <laughs> Makes sense. Um but uh, if, if it's something presented to me historically as a lover of history and you screw it up that badly, um, that's bad. Now, if you run something as they did in Hamilton and things like that, you're using the best singers, loved it. Perfectly fine. Right. Because I could hear the arguments. Yeah, the Actually, I, is great too. Yeah, I would have disagreed with Hamilton, though. I would have been more Jeffersonian. <laughs> Not slave thing, but more of a, how economics work. He believes mm. that you pay your bills then the rest of your money is yours. Hamilton thought, nah, a little bit of debt's a good thing. That's not going to get out of hand. <laughs> and in the well, short run, that was good. But in the long run, not a good idea. But uh, but the thing is, for better or worse, and how you saw that play, it got people interested in that time period. And they were getting close to the right information. You know, they sprinkled this and that into it, because I have seen it. Um but at the same time, who the hell knew who Hamilton was other than getting the, the, the trivia question wrong on who's on a $10 bill? They were going to replace uh, Hamilton with Harriet Tubman, uh, which I think be fine. But, Not um, Aaron Burr. No, Aaron Burr. Yeah, if you remember the, the peanut butter commercial. But now it's going to go to the $20 bill, which actually makes more sense to me because Andrew Jackson hated paper money. He said if it, if it can't bite it and it still stays away because he believed gold, silver, he did not believe in printing money. And I won't be caught dead on a $20 bill. He's only really on there as a practical joke against him because he was dead and then they put him on there. He would never want to be on paper money. So you put anyone on Harriet Tubman, put it there. It'd be fine with me. And then you imagine people in another country. Who is this? This must be fake. <laughs> so See, now, Tubman. did you watch, did you watch um, Washington Spies? What was the AMC series? That's a good movie. Um, oh yeah. my God. That yeah. was so killer. Oh, was it, is it? the first it, it, well, Washington spies right it's um yeah. well he created a whole spy network and when um uh oh god who's the guy that was uh the Benedict Arnold he started fighting for the British side as a leader for an American unit anyway um so one of Washington's let's say it he was a slave um turn a, called turn turn t-u-r-n yeah yeah you let him go and he goes to goes to him and he says, like, I had to run away from Washington and he gives them some fake information. And then the British go, you think you could work for us? No, I see, I'm so Irish because so I don't do a British accent. <laughs> work for us and go back. He's like, yeah, I think I can do that. <laughs> it was Andre who had tried yeah. to get him to come over to the other side. And Andre yeah. made the fatal mistake of not being in uniform when he was in, in the and area. They, they hung him. And he used to be the ex-boyfriend of Benedict Arnold's wife. Shipman. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's the problem. Did anyone yeah. not see that coming? Oh, yeah, that and, she girl. Was, and she was a Tory on top of it. She wasn't even for the revolution. <sighs> My God, terrible. More, more than likely, she probably spying and married him. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, that was Curry early, Washington uh, spies was great, and I don't yeah. know why. I don't. Know. Maybe someone can answer this question, Pete. But mm -hmm. you can go through the three seasons. You get to the fourth season. You can't buy, or or get the fourth season without it being like $200 or something. I don't really understand why season one, two, and three, I can get all three of those for like 30 bucks. But why is it season four is 200 and something, no matter what source I go to. Is it, if is someone it, can it, tell me how to get it, I appreciate it, it. Is it still on streaming somewhere? I don't I don't think so. AMC don't believe is still streaming it at that level. Maybe they have it on their site, but I don't understand why there's four seasons, three are cheap enough to get four. Well, the is, reason I the reason I said that is you can hook up a, a burner and then burn it into a CD, course. and it'd be cheaper to buy the equipment than it would be to buy the DVD. I know mean, that's a good point. Really, I hadn't thought about doing that. That's a good <laughs> idea. I hadn't thought about that. That's good. That's good. I thought about it. You know, another series I love was. Um, 
is Outlander. Outlander, I love that series. I want to see that. I started to watch that, but I get really busy. I work like 16 hours a day. The fact sure. that we're doing this is very rare. You know how hard it is to get a hold of me for stuff. And so do my clients. They're like, you never answer the phone. No, because I'm usually handling somebody else. Why can't you see oh, me tomorrow? Freak. Because people book four months in advance to talk. That's, <laughs> yeah. People are like, they, they're like, hey, can you make a, an appointment with me, Coco? And I'm like, I mean, I can. It's better off finding on the same day. I'm much better off than telling you four weeks in advance because the day is constantly changing. So yeah, we're, we're running 16, 18 hours a day. Yeah, there's something to understand there. If you want to get your taxes done, they say, I'm not taking any clients right now. <laughs> so I'm happy where I am. You want to get your tax done, and that person is available the next day. More than likely, they suck. Right. Just saying. <laughs> right. Like, I'm available uh, all the time. Now, if they're new, I get it. But if, if everyone knows to there and they know they're good, it, it, sometimes it takes months to get someone that manipulates it. That's why sometimes you need somebody else to do it. So like if someone has an audit, you have to tell the other person and say, here, here's all the stuff I got. Here's this. Go have at it. If it's the truth, you should win with no problem. Tell the story. Here's the numbers that match. Here's why I got to do that, that kind of thing. But if you're <laughs> lying to your tax guy, <laughs> more than likely, your tax guy is going to go like, and you're on your own. I'm out right. of <laughs> And walk away. And same with your with the person who's helping you with your real estate investments, their purchases. They have, to be, they have to be knowledgeable about what you're actually doing. If you're telling them a freaking story, you just burned your best resource because a lot of the time, just like your tax preparer or your, your real estate agent or the, your, you're really your consultant, uh -huh. it's better than an attorney because they don't have certain requirements as an attorney to do certain things. They can give you input that's a little bit different than anything else. And people uh -huh. don't realize these are the most important pieces in their financial choices. Like, oh, I want to go to my financial uh, advisor. Oh, okay. Who's yeah, going to tell you to do what again? Well, yeah. okay, go ahead. Well, have a great time. A, a financial advisor, if they don't do taxes, can't tell you anything how the tax works. You have to go back to the tax guy. For a tax right. guy, the guy give information. You notice how we gloss on things a lot. There's a reason behind it. There's something called blue sky laws. <laughs> <laughs> and a blue sky law means uh, <laughs> if someone makes less than a certain amount of money, you cannot give them certain types of advice because it's supposed to be taking – it's taking um, – advantage of them, especially if you're making money on it. Thing is, I give my advice for free. I don't, you know, so I don't have that. But the point is, if I, I know what they make, and, I'm like, and once I see over something, they start asking me questions, I can give more detailed information. What I can't do, because I no longer do securities, is I can't tell which stock to buy. I can tell them the concept of how it works and how you save money and how you move things. And, and if they want to buy a house, I can't tell them what house to buy. I can send them no, to a real estate. They can't. If I said to someone like, what stock should I buy? Okay, I'm going to send you to a, a broker. And then they'll present them with different things. And then they go, well, how do I save taxes? What's more tax advantage? They kick them back to me. <laughs> this is how it works. They do this on purpose. So it's a little difficult to get all the information in one place. And that way you can't catch up to somebody's up here. But the advantage of somebody up there, since they make more than a certain amount of money, they know they can ask almost any of them and they can give them personal advice. You know, because they're considered smart enough to uh, understand, you know, that's my money. Okay, that would cost me this, you know, like that. I also have to be careful of other things. Like I'm talking to a client and I find out something ahead of time. And I know this because I'm doing stuff. I can't act on it or tell anybody. So if, like if I'm doing someone who's a, who works for a bank or this, and I have them, I always ask them, is this public knowledge or is this you just had a meeting? Because I, I need to know it for their taxes. If they mm -hmm. say like, give it a day. <laughs> like, okay. You got to wait till it comes out on the news and then you can act on it if you want to. But you can't tell one client because even if you're um, a caddy on a golf course, you hear something you tell someone illegal. Unless you're a representative or a senator, <laughs> you find out stuff there, perfectly fine. Uh, not, a, not a particular person in California who has oh, been that's, that's, uh, that's how long? The yeah, there's, not, there's one of the main ones. Who might be 80 state. something years old and likes ice cream hmm <laughs> who is that i'm really uh, a lizard but that's a friend that was visiting her husband what yeah that's a whole thing but the thing is let's look at it from an economic point of view those trades are public record you literally right. within a few hours can or a day can do the same thing even though you hate or like do you know they have that information and once they put it out it's now public knowledge Right. And then you just follow along behind them. 
Uh, there's there's a company, I wish they, we could get them as a sponsor, that literally just tracks what all politicians do and just tell you what they're investing in. <laughs> Forgot oh, the name idea. of it. Yeah, let's go after that. We need to find them. We need to have a conversation with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll put them as a guest. You know, talk away. <laughs> when did you decide to create this algorithm that actually follows all the politicians? But again, second a politician does it, it's public knowledge. You know, it's not, there's no way it's um, backward now because it's right there. You know, it's, it's different than you heard about it before they did it. You can't do that. Just ask no. Martha Stewart. <laughs> yeah. She's she, done all right, though. Yeah. She's done all right still. No, no well, she, she served her time and she's making, you know, crystal balls and whatever she makes for, <laughs> for Christmas or whatever it is. <laughs> if you yeah. like your... If you want your balls to hang freely on the tree, make sure they're separated. And clearly, there's a way the through. technique I like to use. Is... <laughs> if you oh, like God. bigger balls, it's easier. Oh, to... is this a sweaty balls conversation <laughs> all over? It is. Unfortunately, it's someone who uh, is like, is there bullets in here? It's okay. I'm pretty sure there are. Bang! That guy. <laughs> that guy. Wow. Too soon. That, that was that a triple guy. layer of, of stupidity going on. The safety officer Cheap, didn't check mean it. Mo, he is. Yeah. Yeah, the safety officer goes to the first AD. Was it the first AD? Yeah. First AD says, it's clean. Hands it to the actor, who's also supposed to check it. But it's, right. it was supposed to be checked two back. And he's the producer. So yeah, I've been on sets where there are weapons. And we were very particular about weapons. I know weapons because I you know, did them in the Army. I used to teach people how to shoot. You know, it's like, choo choo And check the one in the chamber. Ching, ching. You, you can check for the blanks because they'll be crimped and there's a different way they look, you know, that kind of thing. And um, and it was a scene that I don't think he was even supposed to be shooting. I don't mean shooting this way. He roll it. I mean shooting the weapon. They were just going through something. He just decided, you know, hey, click. Uh-oh. <laughs> and it went through two people. But and, you're never supposed to point the weapon, no matter what, in the direction of a person under any circumstances. Right. Why is it that that guy gets away with not having to follow any rules or ethics? Why? I'm sure there was a lot of lawsuits and it was privately dealt with, but he needed to have a, 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 a example made of that one. That was just so wrong. Starting with the weapons officer, who is the daughter of a famous weapons officer, yes. but she wasn't that good yet, apparently. I mean, they were shooting those weapons like the day before with real bullets in them. Well, what never... about all the other things he did? Like, you know, he was cheap on everything. He didn't want insurance. He yeah. doesn't want any of the, the members of the crew to be staying anywhere nearby that couldn't even get more than two hours of sleep, which is totally against all the rules and regulations. But it's okay because it's him. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Alec Baldwin gets away with it. Um, yeah. I, what did really... he get away with? Oh, I got it. Yeah. I heard it. Murder? <laughs> well, I was wondering, was that even a union shoot? Because if it's a union shoot, they have to have insurance. Well, probably not because, I mean, I'm guessing unless they just let that slide with him too because it's, yeah. it's him. He's yeah. so amazing. Oh, okay. So yeah. amazing. Yeah. He really is amazing for sure. Not that I have an opinion about how he could have been handling that. But the, but the point is, is that that reckless, careless behavior caused yeah. death caused to death. someone an unnecessary risk. And she so. was already kind of scared. That's this the story that comes out. I had nobody that I work with that were anywhere near that movie. So I was getting every second and third hand. Like, oh, oh let's talk about economics again. Let's start with Oprah. Uh, now we're canceled. <laughs> Oprah uh. <laughs> <laughs> when Oprah gave away oh, the cars. Are, yeah, yeah. When Oprah gave away the cars, people forget when you give something to them and they didn't pay for it, they have to pay the taxes on it. So she's like, you get a car, you get a car. They couldn't afford even the taxes on these cars. Now, yeah, she would have said, give me a dollar, I'll sell you the car. That would have been okay. You've got to have a transaction for the economics. Now, oddly enough, though, when Ellen DeGeneres did it, the show paid for the taxes. I know this for a fact because I had a few people that worked there. And in regards with the opinion of the show we're hearing secondhand, that was actually a really sweet thing to do, to actually give cars away and take care of the taxes. I agree gift. with you. Yeah. I agree. So, so since I don't know the person, I don't have an opinion on one way or the other. But that, because I saw that, I saw that because uh, someone got one. I saw that they get a 1099 miscellaneous value of the car. You have to claim it. And then and then the taxes were paid right on there. I went, wow, I've never seen that. You do prices right. You win a new car, pay the taxes because <laughs> they write that off. Sure. Yeah. Now, if they would accept it again as a dollar, like someone offers you a house. Here's a house. 
And that's actually income, especially when you sell it because you pay nothing for it. But you paid a dollar for it, you're you're fine. Mm. <laughs> okay. I bought you a dollar. You pay a dollar for it. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't gonna bring it up, Pete, but <laughs> since you have <laughs> well, I bought one in a city. You did all right with that house. Uh, I haven't sold it yet. I just I fixed it up. It was built eight, it was built in 1874. I just felt like it needed to be saved. And it was in the middle of a gang neighborhood. And guess who I get to paint the house? The gang. They were great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful. Oh, no. See, that's what I was talking about. We're talking about relevance, like who's got a criminal background? Who cares? In yeah. some cases, it doesn't really matter. So what? Yeah, so I, what? Did, I came at it at an awkward angle, but it's kind of what I meant. Because <laughs> you find out what they did, it's like, oh, I don't care about that. That's fine. <laughs> you know, that works out well. Right. They paid that's all their cool. bills, though. <laughs> don't care where the money comes from. Um, <laughs> I remember signing that up, and I go, uh, I go, what's the percentage of the sale of the house I got to pay? Because you have to get stuff when you go to a city and all the paperwork. And they go, it's um, it's it's this a certain percent. And they go, well, how much? They go, well, it's minimum 750. And I go, that's outrageous. That's 7.5% more than I pay for the house. <laughs> that's 700 and a half a percent. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. wrong with this town. And they're this laughing. This is a ripoff. The whole time I'm doing that. <laughs> and I also find out sometimes, like you're fixing your stuff, but you hire someone, then they have to get a contract, a license, and an inspection. And it was something that wasn't important. It was like drywall and stupid stuff. So I'm like, oh, yeah, he's going to do it. Oh, does he have his license and this? Oh, I forgot. He's just, he's just helped me carry the drywall. I'm doing it all. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was like, I, I used to build sets, but things I built, uh, you know, back in theater days, um, they weren't permanent. You know, I was like, oh, that's, that's falling apart. Hold on. Kitchen, kitchen. Okay, it's good. No one go there. <laughs> go around. <laughs> then we did destroy that set after a few weeks of shows. Yeah. Build another one. But um, I, I was pretty good. I had, Every time I built something for that house, I did have it inspected. Didn't have to. I just wanted to see if I was any good at stuff. And I remember we did the electricity, or the, the main part we set up. And the guy that was helping me put it on upside down. And then there's supposed to be some green thing in there. So this little guy, it's a little black man. Um, he's not too short. He's husky and all that, but he wasn't very tall. And he looks just like my drill sergeant when I was in basic training. So he comes to inspect it. And he says, you need this little green thing. I go, that's weird. You remind me of my drill sergeant, stuff he would say. And he goes, he said, you need this little green thing. And I said, yeah, I thought it was weird at the time. <laughs> He had no sense of humor, but to me, I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> well, maybe if anyone's not going to have a sense of humor, I'm okay with the electrician not needing to be funny. I just needed to be correct. Can you not let anything burn down, please? <laughs> oh, I doubled everything. It had safety things on each plug, plus it had a safety switch that could pull, plus I had, you know, and then I had to encase things so if someone tries to steal the wire, you would have to cut through it with a diamond saw if you needed it, because that, mm -hmm. you know, people steal things in certain areas. So I made a deal with the gang that if they catch anyone inside, there was a bounty on them. If somehow they were, you know, I don't want to say that out in the open because it might still happen. They got a thousand dollars. I had the safest house on the block. The alarm system is not on the inside, but on the outside, the whole neighborhood hears it. Those are good ones. <laughs> yeah. It's, hey, his house is being broken. Into. Everyone click, 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 run into the house. My response time was way better than the police. <laughs> like, oh, the guy ran away. I even barricaded the doors, try to kick those and you'll break your leg. You saw my house, the one I had. There. Yeah. It's cute. It needs another paint job. But other than that, uh, the structurally on the inside, solid. You know, I made sure that it was all good. I just want to resurrect something and give back to an old neighborhood that I used to live in. I didn't live right. in that neighborhood. Pete, Pete, the author of the dollar um, house deal. That's right. <laughs> Look I it mean, up. It, you just use it as the bones. You, know, like you can buy a crappy house for hardly anything and then you put your money in it. You know, it's going to be less. When you build a house, it's obviously less because then they sell it for a profit. <laughs> so I building mean, it is true. cheaper. You can buy some land, get yourself a septic tank, drop down, um, like, say, a tiny house that has a bathroom in it, and then surround that with a regular house with floors and rooms and people. Don't even get me started on the tiny houses. That's our next episode. Okay? We get down to houses. Now we get down to business. Now we get down to real deals for people. Okay? Now we're talking episode. about that commercial land agriculture aquifers does yes. anyone even use those do you even know yeah. what that is oh yeah not something to wear okay cool okay all well, right we'll be, we'll be the next thing if we can remember it and we've been drinking not drinking as much <laughs>
right. Well, well, Pete, it's been another great episode. Oh, lost you. So what she, what, I'm back. Uh, and so <laughs> say, what, are, what are we asking people to do, Pete? Two things. Uh, uh, subscribe below. Um, uh, uh, tattoo your body like, with us. I've seen things. Like, so you yes. go through the airport and, really? and, and, and then leave comments. And and then if you want to be a sponsor, like, advertiser, and yeah, and subscribe. And uh, if you want to be a sponsor or something like that and want a commercial in here or you want – yeah, we'll do that. If you want us to come to your house – we will at awkward times, <laughs> uh, maybe at two in the morning because we'll be there late. And and if you're renting the place, we'll kick in your door, but they'll keep your deposit. And then we'll we'll talk about finance <laughs> and, and, and and dancing and 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 <laughs> and more. Yes, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having us, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And you've been watching the Coco and Pete podcast. We appreciate you. And please stand by for your 10 seconds of silence. Here it goes. You ready?